Good morning there, mad scientist. <laughs> it's Nuclear Natalie here from San Diego Mad Science, and I'll be your mad scientist for today. On behalf of Fleet Week at San Diego, uh, they have provided you guys a lovely little clip that we'll get to share with you guys today. And of course, we'll have a, a segment for some questions and any other things you guys have to share, um, me as well, towards the end of our show. So in a moment here, you guys will get to see our well-prepared little video for you guys to enjoy. So I hope you guys have a great time getting to learn some things and we'll see you guys towards the end. Alright you guys, let's get ready to meet some dinos. So, you may have heard of some popular dinosaurs before. Maybe you've heard of the T-Rex. Maybe you've heard of the long neck. Or maybe a Triceratops. So, these are so many different dinosaurs that have lived on this earth millions and millions of years ago. So let's meet some of them. We have, like we mentioned, the Triceratops. He kind of looks like my friend right here. He has his horns, he has a nice little head shield, and he has a very heavy neck shield. That is this part right here. He is about 30 feet long, could be 10 feet tall, and he weighs about five tons. His favorite food though is not other dinosaurs. This right here is an herbivore. He likes the plants. So that's our Triceratops. Let's meet some other dinosaurs that maybe roamed the earth four million years ago. We have the Ankylosaurus. He is a low heavy body, pretty short. He's about 35 feet long and he also weighs about the same as our Triceratops. He's about five tons. He is also an herbivore, but the Ankylosaurus also likes insects. So that's a nifty little treat. We then have the mighty long neck. However, the mighty long neck is not his actual scientific name. His name is the Apatosaurus. Like we mentioned about the long neck, he has a long neck. He has a short body, but he also has a long tail. And like I mentioned, his name is Apatosaurus, even though we may have referenced him through his neck. And he is also an herbivore. He likes to eat all the nice plants and likes to leave the other dinosaurs alone. Let's meet another dinosaur. We have the Parasaurolophus. He is another plant eater. He is about 30 feet long and he has a hollow three-foot crest on his head. As you can see right here, it has a long little, kind of like our um, Triceratops here, it has a little neck shield. So does our Parasaurolophus. It also has a long kind of head crest to protect their neck. We then have the Iguanodon. It has kind of some iguana teeth. If you've ever seen an iguana, that's how they get their name, because they have similar teeth to the iguanas. They also have a long body, and they have little short arms, like the T-Rex. These, however, are also herbivores. They eat nothing but plants. Let's talk about one more of my friends. You may have seen him. He kind of looks like this guy right here. And we have what is called the Spinosaurus. He is about six feet tall, is about seven tons in weight, so he's a little heavier than our Triceratops. But this guy, however, is a meat eater. He likes to eat the other dinos or other little critters that were crawling throughout the earth 40 million years ago. That leads me to our favorite dinosaur of them all, the Tyrannosaurus rex. He is also known as the Tyrant Lizard because he is about 
46 feet long and 18 feet tall. He has a very large body, a very long tail, but he has little arms. And he likes to eat all the other dinosaurs, but possibly other critters that were crawling around the earth 40 million years ago. And of course, as you know, our T-Rex is the largest meat eaters of all the dinosaurs. You'll need Q-tips, you'll need some glue, and some construction paper. So now that we know what dinosaurs may have looked like on the outside, let's take a look on the inside. Right here in front of me, I have some of my little dinosaur friends that are already revealing their nice little skeletons. If you could see here, we have a nice little skeleton showing you the inside of what a dinosaur may have looked like. Since you guys may have known what they look like on the outside, it is entirely your choice to pick a dinosaur that you're going to make its x-ray out of. With our x-rays, you guys can choose any dinosaur you want. Today, I'm going to pick the Triceratops because he's one of my favorites. So to start it off, I'm just going to take my Q-tips. Maybe I'll just place a couple of them down. So just to kind of start to make this little curve here, I'll make my Q-tips make a little curvy mountain. Now you can use tape or glue. I'm going to use some tape in case I need to move their x-ray bones. Now, you can make the head out of a piece of paper or you could use some Q-tips. So I'm still just adding on the spine. So it is starting to curve kind of like my uh, triceratops. So now I need to add, I'm going to bend this Q-tip to make two of the horns because our triceratops is called Triceratops because they have three horns on the front of their head. They have the two at the top and the one on the nose. So I'm going to make the two horns on the top and then I'll tape it down. And I think I'll also make the neck shield out of a Q-tip too. I'll kind of just curve it. to kind of start to make a little head-neck shield. So, I've made two of the horns, and now I've started to make the little neck shield. So now we're kind of getting our dinosaur shape going. So we have our Triceratops with his two horns. You could kind of see his neck shield. So now let's make the tail using our Q-tips. And you can cut them to make them smaller. With your Q-tips, you can cut them to make them smaller. That way you have little bones for your tail. And again, we tape them down, or you could glue them down. Whatever you have handy. Okay. So now we have our tailbone kind of starting. And let's work on our legs. So, I'm going to cut them to make the little toe parts, our toe bones. And now we'll make the leg bones. And we'll tape them down. And 
now we have something that looks more like a dinosaur. Maybe. You could use your imagination to make it as best of an x-ray that you can with your Q-tips. Now I'm just going to add two more for my spine and mine should be about done and ready to examine. And that should be everything. And this is my Triceratops. And you guys can always send us pictures of your guys' creations because we enjoy seeing your creative minds at work.
you know I'm the oldest of the dinosaurs? No, I'm the oldest of the dinosaurs. Don't you know who the tallest of the dinosaurs is? I should be the oldest. No, I'm the oldest. Ah, da, da, da. Oh, hey guys. Uh, I didn't know you were back. Um, how embarrassing. How about let's get to our lesson. <gasps> You'll need plastic dinosaurs, some flour, a bowl with some water, some salt, some food coloring, and some newspaper. Now that we talked about some dinosaurs and got to see their x-rays and make some of our own, let's make some imprints or fossils. So, of course we haven't seen physical dinosaurs ourselves, but scientists have dug up some bones or maybe have even found imprints like fossils in some of our rocks to where you have the rock something has landed on it and millions and millions of years it doesn't get crushed into that rock it simply leaves a print so that's what we're gonna make here today with our flour we're gonna add it in our mixing bowl we're gonna add some salt maybe some more now we're gonna add some water and we're going to mix it up. And now we're going to mix it up. Now we are making a dough that we are going to imprint some dinosaurs on. So if you have some plastic dinosaurs nearby, we're going to make some fossils with them. So you just want to mix it up to a nice little dough consistency. And we'll get a glob of some, and I'm going to put it on my newspaper here. I'm just going to take a little glob, and I'm going to make it nice and flat. So that I can imprint my dinosaur. So, once you have a nice little glob, grab any dinosaur you want and simply press him into the dough. Now, he might need to be in there for a while to allow the mold to tighten up, so we'll check him out in a little bit.
started now. Scientists, such as archaeologists, are what help us find out more information about all these dinosaurs. They go out on excursions to maybe the deep desert areas or maybe just flat areas where there used to be some water or other civilization. They go study the area and maybe even dig. So archaeologists go and dig into the dirt and maybe they happen upon some bones or maybe they also find some imprints like we made. Today I have right here in front of me a nice little bucket to represent a site that was found where there was millions of dinosaur bones found inside. So let's take a look at what we can find ourselves. Archaeologists sometimes use little paintbrushes to dust off the dirt once they find their skeletons or their bones. So I already found one right here. Let's just dust off some of this extra dirt. Now, this guy looks a little familiar. Do we maybe remember what kind of dinosaur this might have been? I think so too. This does look like a triceratops. I think we noticed that because of this horn and we have half of the head shield noticeable. Let's see what other dinosaurs we could find. I'm just gonna dig and dig. Oh, this one's a little dirty. Let me dust off some so I could make it out. So, this one kinda looks like it has some mini spine spikes. Can we maybe tell what kind of dinosaur this might have came from? So many options, it's not really easy to tell. Let's keep digging. Maybe we can find another part of this dinosaur and figure it out. So we'll dig. Oh, it looks like I found another piece. Now this piece looks like it has some teeth right here. It also looks like we have the beginning formations of possibly the head. Do we maybe know what this dinosaur is? Hmm, possibly. I see that there are some teeth here and it kind of looks long. It could belong to a T-Rex, but it could also belong to another maybe meat eater. Maybe let's dig some more. Ooh, I think I found something. Wait a minute. This doesn't look like a dinosaur skeleton. How'd this get in there? Mm, they probably went and dug in the ancient burial grounds of England or something where some princess might have lost her jewelry. Let's keep digging. Now, I mean, this maybe could have been used during the dinosaur times if there were scientists alive during that time to study them. I don't think this is what I'm looking for. Let's keep trying.
100 to Mississippi, 100. Oh, you guys are back. I almost got to 103 Mississippis. It took you guys that long. Where have you been? Let's get started, shall we? <laughs> so we looked at some x-rays. We made one version of an imprint. Let's make a separate version of an imprint. Like we mentioned earlier, when a leaf falls and lands on a rock, that rock might get covered up by something else. And now that leaf is smashing between those rocks for millions and millions of years. But when we remove that rock, we might get a little imprint on that rock of our leaf. That is what we're going to make here today. However, I don't have a rock. I don't have a dinosaur. I do have <coughs> my funky rubber chicken. So, if you can see, when I hold my chicken facing you guys, you can see his body. You can see the shape of his eyes, his mouth, maybe some of his arms and his legs. So we're going to paint this side. You can grab whatever object you need and you're going to do the same. Just paint one side and then we're going to imprint it on our paper. So let me get some paint and you just slather it on your object or your chicken. You want to get as much of the detail as you can so we could get a really nice imprint going. All right, I think my chicken is nicely covered now. Let me get his bow tie. And now, grab your paper, place it down on your newspaper, and with the paint side down, <coughs> smash it against your paper. <coughs> and you want to get as much of the paint to imprint on your paper <coughs> as you can. When you lift it up, we should have something that looks like our funky chicken. And this is your own little imprint that you can also make at home. You need construction paper, you need some googly eyes, and you need some glue. We just looked at some flashcards of many dinosaurs that might have lived millions of years ago. So now, with some paper, we're going to make one. And hopefully, you guys can make it to where it flies. So, with our paper, we're going to first take one corner. Make sure it's a big piece of paper. Take one corner. Hold the side to make a triangle and crease it. So I just matched this corner down here and I made sure this corner was nice and sharp. And I folded it down. So once you crease it, you're going to cut off this extra piece. Like so. You find the corner and cut right across. And we don't want to throw it away because we're going to need this piece for later. So now that we cut off that extra piece, we're going to open it up. And this crease that we made on our paper, we're going to cut it. So cut right across that piece so that we have two triangles. Now, with one triangle, one of your triangles, you're going to fold it right in half. So we fold it, and then we crease it. So now you have a smaller triangle. Once you do it to one side, grab your other big piece and fold it in half as well. And crease it. Now we have two triangles. With one of them, we're going to open it back up and we're going to cut 
right down this line. So cut right down the line. Whoa. <clears throat> So you cut right down the line, and I have black paper, but if you have colored paper, you can add some designs. These are going to be my wings, so I'm just going to add some little lines to show the veins that we sometimes see in our dinosaur wings, or our bat's wings. We see those veins that hold our wings in place. With your other triangle that is not yet cut, we are going to open it up, put glue on one side, and close it up. So, we add some glue. We're going to glue one side down. We're going to close it up once you have the glue with your triangle. Open it up. We're going to add some glue. We'll glue it on both sides. We're going to take our wings. We're going to lay it on the glue side. Get your other wing. Stick it on to that other sign. So, ooh. Put one wing down, then we put the other wing down, and now we close it up. So you could have your wings. Just look like that. Now, grab your extra piece, and we're going to do the same thing like we did at the beginning. We're going to bring our corner piece diagonally across to make a nice little crease down the middle. So you take it, you fold it down. We're going to do the same thing. And we're going to cut across that bottom line so we have a little square. So with this little square piece that we just cut off, we're going to open it up and we're going to glue it closed. Right above your wings on this little triangular piece, we're going to go ahead and glue our head so that it kind of looks like that. So you'll glue it on one side. So once you have your head on, you can grab your googly eyes if you have some. If you don't, you could draw them on a piece of construction paper, cut them out, and glue them on. Just going to add some glue. Put it where the eye maybe goes. I'm going to add a mouth. So there's part of my dinosaur so far. With one of your wings, we're going to bring it down and fold it. We bring the wing down, we fold it, flip it over, and fold down the other wing side. So now they can open up. So with our square, we're going to open it back up. We're going to cut right down the middle. Now, with our wings, we're going to grab our rectangle, fold it in half. We're going to add glue on one side. 
And then we'll stick it to the bottom of our wing, just like so. When we close it up, we could flip it around to do the exact same. We grab our rectangle, fold it in half, add glue on one side. We're going to add glue onto one side, lift up our wing, put the glue side down, smash it to the wing, and then flatten it out so that when you pick up your dinosaur, you are able to make him flat. And if you pull both sides, you're able, with the glue sticks, when you pull on the flaps, you're able to make your dinosaur fly.
signing off from Mad Science of San Diego. We'll see you soon. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little video we had prepared for you guys. And if at any point you guys have some questions, um, we could take some. Otherwise, I do have a few things left to show you before I make some little closing remarks. Um, just in case you haven't seen it before, I have here a little replica of a dinosaur egg. So I just thought it'd be pretty cool to show you guys um, maybe what they originated from, where they came from, where they popped out of, right? So, uh, this is a nice little replica of a dinosaur egg. <clears throat> and I also wanted to share a little replica of a T-Rex tooth. Whoa. Uh, this is another little fossil you guys could try to make. If you guys ever do get to join one of our in-person mad science classes, we actually get to make one of these. So, you guys could always find out how to get more information about maybe how to make it on your own. But aside from that, I hope you guys learned some cool, fun things about some dinosaurs and maybe even some fun little arts and crafts you guys could do this holiday season with uh, all the extra time you're going to have away from from your Zoom classes, assuming you guys are still going to get a little bit of a break. And of course, I hope you guys enjoyed what you guys saw today. If you did, we have some uh, fun things you guys could always join. This week, we just started a new after school virtual session. And uh, we talk about bugs, we do detective science, we talk about uh, making machines and all that fun stuff. So if you're interested in that, you guys could check out our website or see about uh, our phone number. Right now it's 858-505-4880. Um, but Aside from that, you guys could always check out our website. We did just start that one, although we do have another virtual after school program starting up. It's all about NASA. NASA Space Academy is coming and it's starting next week. So you guys could check out your our website on how to join that class. Well, if those aren't part of your jam, we do have virtual birthday parties. Uh, we are able to get your family, maybe you have some family in Florida, maybe you have them in Washington, New York, Virginia, all these places all around the US aside from San Diego, right? Well, we are lucky to be able to combine and join your family together from all across the nation through Zoom and do virtual birthday parties now. We mail them the stuff that you guys get to do and get to build with us while we teach and do a little show for your birthday. And we also allow a little five minutes at the end to sing happy birthday to you. And of course you can eat your cake all to yourself. Um, but aside from that, those are some of the things we have going on. If you guys are in school, you guys can also ask your principal maybe how to get a mad science show to your school uh, and also other virtual programs we have being offered. We also have some little boxes coming up soon. If you don't want to log into a Zoom class and hear my voice, well, we do have kits that you guys can also get shipped to your house with the materials that you guys get to build on your own. Little fun science experiments, stuff like growing a green thumb, learning to plant and make vegetables and all that fun stuff. We have a crazy chemist one where you guys get a bunch of lab equipment that you guys get to experiment with on your own. And we also have another one about some levers and some gears, some robots and some machines, right? So if you guys don't want to partake in any of our virtual classes, we do have other stuff in store for you guys. Always just check out our website, give us a phone call, and I enjoyed my time here. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well, and we hope to see you soon.